Hey guys, Lee here from Presonus, and we're here today at scan.co.uk and we're with the Presonus Quantum, which is our brand new Thunderbolt 2 interface. Um, so this is our professional level uh, interface, 26 by 32, uh, it's 192 kilohertz at 24 bits, so it's pro level recording. It sounds amazing with our XMAX Class A built-in preamps, um, so there's eight built-in pre's on, on this particular unit. It's also very easily expandable, so I'll show you how we can do that in a little bit. What's really cool about this is it works very tightly integrated with Studio One, but it works really, really well with other DAWs as well. And because of the low latency, we can now run all of our plugins and things uh, natively. So we can insert our really nice Waves plugins and all these sort of things directly on the input channel with virtually inaudible, la well, inaudible latency and uh, really, really tight sounding uh, tracking is the, main, is the main thing here. Um, so on the front panel here, you'll see we've got two inputs. So these are combo inputs, uh, XLR and jack, as you can see. Um, what's cool about this is for the, the inputs on the front, we can switch these to instrument level. Um, so we have the option for instrument level, line level, and mic level. Um, also on the front, we've got um, this control panel. So on the control panel, we've got built-in talkback. So we simply push the talkback button and our built-in mic on the front here is just really small. Um, and we can route this talkback to any of our headphones or any of our mixes from our DAW. Uh, also, we've got a, a dim and a mute button. So these are all features that would hark back to the days of large format consoles where we'd have a, a dim uh, or a mono button as well. So we can kind of check our summed left and right to make sure there's no phase issues. So they're all very professional features built into the Quantum. Um, also pretty cool metering on the Quantum. For our eight inputs, we've got uh, these LEDs. And on the top of each LED strip, we've got a blue light, which will tell you if you've got your phantom power switched on or not. So this can be useful. So if, if you don't want to plug in your ribbon microphone and, and pop it with, with 48 volts, some of the older ribbons will do that. Um, then we've got our output meters. We've got this large knob for our main volume. And then we've got two separate headphone outputs. So these are really high quality, loud headphone outputs with their own individual volume control. Um, these can be sourced from any mixes within our, our DAW as well, so it's very, very useful. Um, going to the back panel, we've got six more combo jacks and XLRs on the back here. These will do mic and line level. But what's really cool is if we use the line level, it, it bypasses the preamp and goes direct to the converter. So if you've got some really, you know, you want to use some different flavor preamps, some of your maybe vintage uh, preamps or external equipment, you can bypass the flavor of our XMAX Class A pre, pre, which is really nice, but you might need something different. So going in here brings you straight to the converter and lets you choose your different styles and flavor for your, your tones. Okay, so moving across then, we've got our eight analog outputs. Um, so, you know, these are eight analog outputs with separate main outputs as well. So lots of options for external equipment and things like this or, um, you know, extra monitors that you can have coming out of these outputs. Uh, what's really cool with this unit though is uh, it's got DC coupled outputs. So these same outputs will give out audio, but they'll also give out control voltage messages. So CV messages to your, for your analog guys, you'll know what that is. Um, so you can send out CV gates and things like this to your analog modular synths. Um, so now this opens the, the interface into a different world. It's a professional studio interface, but now you can bring this out and you can use this at your gig. So maybe you've got some sessions you've recorded in the studio um, and you wanna, you wanna sync up some of your analog gear for the live gig, sync it up with your DAW session. So this can be really done rock solid now. Um, there, there are some software plugins that will do things like transfer your MIDI into CV gate information. So there's one I use there. Um, it allows me to record in MIDI. And out of these actual outputs, I can send CV gates to my analog synths, like my mini brutes and things like that. So, so this can become like your central hub for all you modular synth guys. It's your audio interface. And it, it allows you to connect from the digital world and bring your, get your, gate inf your CV information out into your analog stuff to really get a a tightly integrated and rock solid tight system with your analog stuff. Uh, also with that, when you stack the units, you know, you, maybe you run out of inputs or outputs from the back of your unit to your synths because as you know, there's lots of cables going on with this modular stuff. 
Uh, as you build up, the, you can just add an extra unit. If you've run out of outputs, stick another unit in, you've got more CV outputs from your DAW. So it can be really, really big, big, uh, full-featured, complex systems built with the CV stuff and the modular SYN stuff. Um, then we have our main left and right out. SBDIF, word clock, so we can connect with BNC connectors to other units uh, to get really tight clocking. Um, then we have our two Thunderbolt uh, connectors. This is where we, we can connect multiple units together very, very simply. So we can daisy chain up to four units with uh, Thunderbolt. Uh, we can also use our DP88 as an extension via ADAT. Um, what's cool there is we can also, from Universal Control Software, control the preamps in our DP88 also. Um, also, you'll see we have uh, MIDI and out on the back, which is very, very useful. So it's a MIDI interface. Uh, what's cool with that, though, is if we're using third-party DAWs, again, we've got very tight integration with Studio One. But if you're using your other third-party uh, DAW, you can control the preamps on the unit via MIDI. Okay, so we have Universal Control, which is our control software for the Personas Quantum. Um, when you open Universal Control, you're first met with this window. Um, and you'll see the icon for the quantum. So from here you can select different sample rates or you can change the clock source from within the unit. Um, so we simply select the quantum unit uh, and you'll see we've got a control panel in that allows us to set our preamp gains, um, allows us to change our 48 volts and things like this, but we can also do this on the unit itself. We can also choose to source the main control knob um, for these different outputs, so maybe that's useful for monitor outputs. Um, and then we have mirrored controls from this, the control center on the front, which will give us our mute, dim, mono, and our talkback. So we've got talkback level in here as well. Um, headphone source, so we can route our headphones to these different sources. And then again, I spoke earlier about controlling the quantum from third-party DAWs, the preamp controls. Uh, so from in here, we will just set the MIDI control to external only, and that will allow us to assign different MIDI messages to, to change the preamp gains from maybe Pro Tools or, or something like this. Um, what's pretty cool as well, I spoke about when we expand the units via Thunderbolt, and also we can use ADAT input from our DP88 or other ADAT equipment, third-party equipment will also work to the ADAT inputs and outputs of the quantum. Um, if we use the Presonus DP88, we also get preamp control for that unit because that will have eight built-in preamps. Uh, and this will show up in universal control as well. Um, what's pretty cool as well is we get an RTA, an RTA on all of our inputs and our outputs for the quantum. So this gives us a really fully featured uh, description of what's happening uh, on our input frequencies. So I can simply select channel one, input or two, and I can see what's going on with my frequency range for this input. Again, we can switch over to the LOR or any of our output mixes, and we get a really in-depth visual visualization of what's happening with our frequencies here. If you're using Studio One, you do get some extra little benefits. Again, the Thunderbolt works perfectly with third-party uh, DAWs, What's really good with it is the low latency, so it plugs straight into your DAW. It should work seamlessly with plugins on your input channels, all sounding really tight and really in time for your latency. If using with Studio One, uh, you can see on the screen here on the right hand side, we get some of the extra controls on our mixer panel that will control the unit itself. So we've got built in talkback, and we can set the level for this. And um, we've also got headphone assign. Um, and then we've got the dim mono mute buttons as well that you'll find on the front of the panel and also in universal control. Um, if you're using it in this way, the system becomes very closely integrated and everything's very fast and works very fast. Um, also, you will have a template. So in Studio One, when you create a new song, you have the option to select different uh, Presonus templates. So in here we have say our Studio 192 mobile and some of our mixing desks. But then you can see we've got the quantum template. You can just click this and all of your inputs and outputs are rooted and you're ready to go. Um, 
What's pretty cool as well, you can see from inside Studio One, we can set the preamp gains. So you'll see as I move the preamp gain in the DAW, this will actually change on the unit and you'll see the dial on the front changing to, um, to the setting, the gain setting you pick. What's cool with this is that you can recall your session in Studio One, your DAW session, and it will recall your preamp settings on your interface. So again, really sim seamlessly, uh, fast workflow and everything recallable very fast and integrated. Okay, so that's uh, an overview of the new Presonus Quantum Thunderbolt 2 interface. Um, we're really excited about this unit. Uh, it's, in our tests, we, we've we found it works really, really rock solid. Uh, latency numbers are really, really low. Uh, it, it sounds really good as well. Um, it's, it's just a really exciting time to have uh, such a low latency uh, interface that, that rivals uh, you know, very expensive units that maybe even DSP-based um, for such a, a reasonable price and kind of you know, easily accessible. Okay, so thanks for joining us today for this uh, overview of the Presonus Quantum Thunderbolt 2 interface. Um, uh, thank you to the guys here at SCAN as well. So it's always great to come in and visit the guys here. Uh, they're really great with all of the equipment. They test everything, they use everything, they make sure what they sell really works and they like it. So we're, they're gonna put this through its tests and check it for latency and get some figures going. Check it on Windows, check it on Mac, um, because we've had some really great response to running on Windows and Mac. Um, so the guys are gonna verify all that and basically try to break the unit. So that'll be great fun to check that out. So uh, thanks again for joining us today.